sharks and other cartilaginous fish evolved during a time called the Devonian period. However, they didn't begin as the apex predators that we popularly know them today, because during that time the oceans were occupied by placoderms or armoured fishes, some of which were apex predators, like Dunkleosteus. And some of the shark species during this time uh, evolved to occupy niches and physiologies that aren't really seen in sharks today. For example, the bizarre tooth whirl of Helicoprion, or that bizarre dorsal fin that you can see in Stethacanthus, which has given it, it the nickname the ironing board shark. And of course, sharks continued to proliferate over the next 400 or so million years, in surviving all of the major extinction events, including the Permian, where about 95% of life was wiped out, and the Cretaceous, which wiped out the dinosaurs. Uh, during this time, sharks would have to compete with other apex predators in the oceans, uh, such as marine reptiles, and after the extinction of the dinosaurs, there was the rise of cetaceans, so the, like the early predators like Basilosaurus, and today, uh, great white sharks still have to compete with orcas. Today there are over 500 extant species of shark all over the world in varying pelagic layers. So what is it that makes sharks so unique? One of the things I find most exciting about sharks is their ability of electrolocation, whereby they can sense the electrical impulses in the body of another animal and use that to locate it, much as other animals would use sight and smell to locate their prey. We should note that uh, this isn't a feature unique to sharks. Other cartilaginous fish like rays and skates have the ability to electrolocate as well, and it's even been found in some bony fish like uh, lungfish and sturgeon. But it's particularly notable in sharks because they have very high concentrations of uh, ampullae of Lorenzini uh, at their heads, particularly in hammerhead sharks, and they're around their heads because because well, that's where it's advantageous to have your sensory organs. Like that's why we have our, our eyes and our nose and our ma mouth and our ears all at the head. But how have sharks, as a group, managed to survive over the past several hundred million years? Whereas like the placoderms, they went extinct before the Carboniferous. Well, one universal feature in sharks is their incredibly efficient digestive system. If a shark is able to use all of the nutrients, or at least most of the nutrients from the prey it consumes, then it won't require to eat more prey items, which is incredibly useful in times of hardship, which is a likely explanation for, as to how many of them were able to survive these mass extinction events. Also key to their success is their adaptive radiation. As I said earlier, there are over 500 species and they occupy so many niches. Of course, we've got the, uh, the giant apex predators like great white sharks and tiger sharks, but there are also the giant filter feeders like whale sharks and basking sharks. And a particular favorite of mine is the Greenland shark, which lives in cold, icy northern waters, living for several hundred years and they can just swim incredibly slowly, consuming whatever they come across. And in tropical coral reefs, sharks are still abundant, with their own species like the tasseled wobbegong, or grey reef sharks, or the reef black tip and the reef white tip, pyjama sharks in the kelp forests of the north. There's just so many environments in the oceans of the world that sharks can exploit. Many sharks are, however, in danger of extinction, particularly since the release of Jaws, both the, the book and the film. Sharks have been vilified in the public consciousness. Of course, I have a complicated relationship with this film because of this effect, but also because it's a really good film and a rather good book. And Peter Benchley, the, the author of the book, uh, noticed this uh, effect of vilification of sharks after the publication and the release of of Jaws, and he famously became an activist uh, for shark conservation, and, and I suspect that he regretted this uh, vilification and, and even writing Jaws. Another massive threat to shark populations is that of shark fin soup, 
and shark finning, whereby sharks are caught, their fins are cut off, and the shark, often still alive, is left back in the ocean. Not only is there the concern of uh, animal cruelty, but also for the populations and their abilities to replenish, as sharks typically reproduce slowly, and the populations are not able to cope with high finning rates. The presence of sharks in marine ecosystems, particularly healthy shark populations, is highly beneficial to the ecosystems. Uh, this is because the sharks will often prey on the weak and the old of their prey species, which will allow for the uh, population control and therefore healthier uh, prey items, usually fish, sometimes things like seals and sea lions or turtles, will be able to continue breeding and allow for a healthier gene pool.